is there any way that we can quit giving our money to the IRS and not end up in jail or with a gun to our head? Well, who is the IRS? The government. Are they? Well, if it was the government, they say that it says Department of Treasury, Internal Revenue Service. Department of Treasury, if you look up Title 31 and see the agencies of the Treasury, the IRS is not one of them. So what's your next guess? A private corporation. So who did they act for? Uh, the corporation, the United States Corporation. I believe that they're third-party debt collectors for the Federal Reserve. Because after all, Congress gave all that money, everything, to the Federal Reserve, so they have a right to collect it. And you do use their money, so I guess you have to pay rent on it. I, I'm not sure. There are so many theories about the IRS. I just know that most people think they have to fill out a 1040 form. You never have to fill out a government form. You can make an affidavit. You can, you can send them a, a, a very well-crafted letter that says, hey, last year I made $102,000 by consulting with clients, and um, is that taxable? Because there are exemptions. And so you ask the head of the IRS if the money that you earned is yours or an exempt or if it's taxable under the Constitution. And it's not. But you have to you have to give something to the IRS in order to cover your fanny. And um, most people don't know what to do about that. And they have unlimited power. They, they, they can put liens in public record, which are fraudulent liens, because a lien is evidence of a debt after a judgment. There has to be a judgment. There has to be a court process. And those liens that they do, if you fold it in, it used to be when when there were summonses or court summons, that they had a summons and it was folded in three places and on the uh, that that had the front on it. And on the front it says the court and the, and the cause number and the date the judgment came down. And then you open it up and it would be the judgment or the summons. And that's still on the back of the lien form. It appeared, but of course, they fax in these things to the county recorder, and then the county recorder puts them on, and it, it ruins people's lives. But there's no legal process, and they're the only ones I know that can get away with no legal process. But there, there is, if you hit the right buttons with the IRS, um, and I'm not telling anybody not to fill out their 1040s if that's what they feel like doing or paying their, paying their taxes, but it is purely voluntary and is self-assessing, purely. But I would just encourage people to read the 1040 booklet. Read it in its entirety. See who it is that has to pay taxes. In the 1040 booklet, when you read it, it says foreign nationals uh, or employees of the government. And then when you read the employer form, the 941 explanation, it says that employers are ones who hold a 218 agreement because when they set up the Social Security Act, they had the Bureau of Internal Revenue um, collect for that or help them out. And in the Social Security Act, there's a section called 218, it's a 218 section, and that says that if you're a government employer, which is all they were, that you can withhold taxes from your people, but you don't have to match them because the government pays that portion for you because you're a government employer. And that's a 218 agreement. So no employer was ever supposed to contribute their own money to pay the taxes. And that's the 218. And if you read that, it says those who have a 218 agreement, but nobody ever reads their booklets. And also in the 1040, it says, even if you are exempt, aha, now we know that somebody is exempt. Who could that be? And then if you look at the Samoan tax form, I think that's the most clear giveaway. If you go online and you pull down the Samoan tax form, it says that Samoan citizens are exempt from paying all taxes unless they're a government, U.S. government employee, in which case they have to fill out a 1040 form to, to show 
what they made, or they have worldwide income, in which case they have to pay a, a 1040 form. So if you were a, an American and you lived abroad and you filed a tax form because you felt you needed to, it's a 2555 and it's got about a $100,000 exemption. But if you made worldwide income other than just what you're reporting on the 2555, then you have to fill out a 1040. So the 1040 is for worldwide income that you make outside. And so would I fill one out? I don't think so. And the other thing that you do with a form that you send to the IRS asking uh, is my income taxable or exempt? Um, you tell them that you have a problem with signing something under penalty of perjury. You want to tell the truth, but since you don't know the tax laws, you really can't fill out their form. You can't use it. But I, I used to, if I can run across a business that hasn't been set up yet, somebody, let's say somebody's thinking about starting a business. Let's say you are. And then I, you look at it and you say, why would you start a business if it wasn't for profit? So you want to do a for profit business. And you look at the, the plethora of forms that you have to fill out that are in, involved with taxes. And you think, whoa, not only am I, I, I you, see, you send a letter to the IRS and you say, I'm starting, I want to open this business. And I, I think I'm going to employ about 20 employees, but I see that I have to fill out these forms. So I'm going to have to hire another employee to fill out the forms that deal with taxation that I have to pay out fill out. Now, since I'm a for-profit corporation, I really don't want to work for you for no pay. So how are you going to pay me? How are you going to remunerate me for that uh, $20,000 to $30,000 salary that I have to pay for this employee that does nothing but fill out your forms? Could you please let me know? And the second thing is, I see that I have to withhold my, you say I have to withhold my employee, employees' wages and match them. Uh, and that that's a big liability. You know, there's a temptation if I'm running short that quarter, I withhold from my employees, but I don't send it in because I can't match it. You know, that's a tremendous liability. So do you, does the government have insurance that it automatically covers me? Or do you pay me to carry my own insurance for that liability? And I'll need these because I'm going to open my doors next next month. And if I don't hear from you, I'm going to assume that none of this applies to me. I've never had him come back on anybody that sent in a... I used to do a form for a guy that he he did pretty well. He made like ninety, ninety-five thousand, 95000 and I'd help him with the form that... I mean, with the letter that he sent in, I made $95,000 by doing therapy for clients last year. If I owe any taxes on it, let me know. So uh, people just don't understand... Because it's such a, and the, and the really bad part about that is, why should you be terrified of your government? And more than, more than anything, why should you be, be terrified by a third party debt collector that everybody gives largesse to? You go to a judge, you say this is illegal, the judge says, IRS! I'm not touching it because they'll come after him. I mean, it's worse than J. Edgar Hoover in his files. It's just a terrible thing. But people have to be informed and stand up because that's not an easy thing. That's not an easy thing. But one thing about it, if you send and ask them if you have, if, if uh, is my is this money that I earned exempt? They can't ever get you for willful failure to file, and that's a biggie. So uh, I you have to tread very carefully with the IRS, and I never encourage anybody not to fill out their forms if they don't know anything different because. I don't want to get people in trouble, and I don't want them to get themselves in trouble.